Thank you very much, Bernard, for that traffic update. Now it's time for our top story, and I have promised you earlier that you can be a part of today's conversation. We're going to be talking about the ministerial lists. Was it worth the wait? It was released yesterday, and um, we have a social we have a commentator. I, I wanted to call him a social commentator. He said no. I wanted to call him a political commentator. He said no. He's um, a man. His name is Zil <laughs> Akarewe, and he's the head of Gem Voices. Good morning, Zil. Good morning. Thank I you. kept through to my promise, right? Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Well, how true. Even though you mentioned all the things it said. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but I did call him a man. Like I said, I was going to call Isn't him. Is that what you said? Oh, yes, I did. Fantastic. I think, Zil, it's great to have you. Very and, great. Um, particularly on this August occasion. We've termed today Ministerial Wednesday. Wednesday. It's usually Woman Crush Wednesday, but, you know, not today. Ministerial Wednesday. <clears throat> okay, so before we, we get, delve into the conversation, we had gone on the streets, we had a box pop where we asked people, can Buhari be present um, and at the same time Minister of Petroleum? And we know that there have been divergent views on the subject matter. We know that the um, senator representing Abia Senatorial District, Abia North, had come out to say that um, it's not possible except Buhari will subject himself to screening by the Senate. And we also know that the Deputy um, Senate, Senate President had come out to say, no, the Constitution empowers him to be able to carry out executive duties without recourse to the legislature. So what is your take on this matter? Who are we being President and Minister of Petroleum? It's not the first time. Uh, before Desiani, um, I don't recall any, I don't recall Obasanjo having a Minister of Petroleum. But again, it's one of those things, it's substance over form. If Buhari says, I'm the Minister of Petroleum, and you give him a lot of headache about it, all he need do is not appoint a Minister of Petroleum and get the Minister of State to report directly to him. It, it's the same thing. Now, the Minister of Petroleum is a very powerful and a very sensitive role, which if you do not have the right person with the right character, as we have seen in the past, we could land in a lot of trouble because the minister has the power to do certain things like issue oil blocks and all of that. So it's a very powerful position. It's not the same thing as the minister of transport. So it, I can understand fully why the president, and he's not the first president to do this, to say, I will vest that power in myself. Now, if the Senate gives him a lot of headache about that, all he need do is appoint a minister of state and not appoint a minister of petroleum. Okay. Therefore, he is the head of the executive. So the power of the Minister of Petroleum that is not appointed will revert to him. Mm. Automatically. I need so to ask you, yeah. Zil, because there's a lot of, I mean, like you mentioned, rightly mentioned, one of the most important um, ministerial positions is the Minister of Petroleum. Under the, in the Constitution, or is there a provision that makes it compulsory to have a Minister of Petroleum? Because like you said, if you have the power to be able to issue oil blocks, that is immense influence and power. Yes, Should one person have that power to do that? Shouldn't should. it be left to a committee to make that decision? Well, it's not a sole power. So it, the, to do certain things, it goes through a, proce a process. Yes. And then you have the power to approve, more or less. It's not, well, we know how it works in Nigeria, but that's how it's supposed, supposed to, to work. work. Yes. Uh, now, the Constitution, uh, don't recall it specifically mentioning what ministries exactly and I think that is also in the power of the executive. Like we, we've heard um, that the president is considering collapsing some ministries. Yes. Again, so if he has the power to collapse, it must imply he has the power to expand. So if he decides to collapse two, three, and we had, I remember when we had maybe 12, 15 ministries, now we have, I think it's 24, 25. Right, yes. Exactly. So we don't, do we need that many ministries? Do we need that many ministers? Are there things that can be collapsed for efficiency? Mm. I mean, those are things that I expect. Those are things I expect the lawmakers to look at and recommend to the executive to implement. Okay, before we go ahead, I would like to open the phone lines to you. 1277 8196 1277 2196 and 1296 These are the numbers to call. We also have the toll-free line for those of you who want to call us free of charge. You can be a part of this conversation. Call us. Give us your contributions, ask your questions, and let us know what you think on the subject matter. Now, we know that President Muhammad Buhari wasn't, he's not the first president to make us wait for this list. It's, it's not really like, people, I, a lot of people say we're making a mountain out of a molehill, but basically, is it, to you, was it worth the wait? That is the ultimate question. Um, what, a few names there, in my opinion, were highly predictable. So, for example, uh, during the campaign, all through January and February, any picture you see of Buhari, you see Amichi on his left, 
you see Fashola on his right, Fire Me somewhere in the background. So it's, we all felt at that time that these names, well, clearly one of them would be maybe Chief of Staff. All those rumors went around even before the election results came out. So the disappointment for me is the fact that what has taken so long of what you call meticulous planning was predictable. Mm. You know, that, that's it. So it's not, in terms of removing that, in terms of taking your time to choose your cabinet, I have no, you take your time and choose your cabinet. Um, I had always advocated, or I, rather, I didn't understand why we had to wait so long for a complete list. Mm. After all, he appointed his um, special advisor on media, after some time, he appointed. So you don't have to make all the appointments on one day. So some sectors are a lot more critical than others. So you don't so have a problem wait. with the fact that this is just like a first batch? That, no, no. What I'm saying is this first batch, if you could have done three, three months ago, so Fire Me, Fashola, Amici, that we all knew, choices. you could have done that three months ago. Okay. And then after another month, you don't have to appoint everybody on day one. But we didn't have to wait this long for piecemeal. But again, like I said, in the, in, over the last three, four, five months, he has a four-year tenure. I would rather you get it right once and for all. Now, only time can tell mm. if we've gotten it right this time. But, yeah. Now, I mean, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned the fact that we had some three obvious choices. Now, one of the reasons some people had given for his delay in releasing a ministerial list is the fact that he wanted to get credible people. So he was doing his own background checks. He wanted to ensure that in line with his promise to fight corruption, all his appointees would be corruption-free, as it were. Now, some names in, on that list have, been, have come under the microscope. A number of people have, people have said, if you have said that you don't want corrupt people, you made us wait for four months, why are these people here? Because we know that their names or their hands are not clean. We know that when Fashola was mentioned, initially people said, fantastic, you did a great job in Lagos. I see you smiling and being a bit, um, you know, but I cannot <laughs> really hear what you have to say. He did a great job in Lagos State. That was until certain allegations came up, his website, for instance. And then we had the issue with the allocation of um, um, buildings in, on, on Awolowo Road. And of course, we had you know, so many issues. We have Amechi as well. Amechi is someone that, even though we haven't had, um, we don't have facts in front of us, well, but people have said, hmm, 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 have you put this man in your cabinet? So we have men like Aldo Obe, the former PDP chair. Now, under PDP, under his leadership, we know that people said governance was not so great. If it wasn't great under your tenure, what has changed? Has changing to um, crossing over to yeah. APC changed your policies, your um, what you're able to do? So please tell us what you think about these fantastic names. <laughs> <laughs> Before you do tell us what you think mm. about this, we have Thanks a caller coming in. <laughs> and, oh yes, in oh, time. Yeah. Anu calling in from Ijebodi. Good morning, Anu. Good morning, Anu. Good morning. All right, Anu, please can you speak up a bit louder as you comment? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We can morning. hear you. How's well, how, your day? Our day is just starting, starting. and it's starting well. Anu, please, can you tell us what you I have wanted, to say? I know, I wanted to contribute to that uh, program that is just going on. Okay. Please go ahead. About the uh, minister's nominee. You see, all the list that uh, President Gwari uh, just released for the out of cynic for screening, I, I think that we are still in one cycle. We are, talking that other, we are talking about corruption. corruption. Can Buhari tell Nigerians categorically that all these people that he, he, he choose, all of them are free from the corruption that is campaigning? The, the, capital, the answer is, is no. Okay. okay. How can, how, how can some, why, why the Buhari cannot look into the society and look for the young Nigerians? that can work with him effectively than all those people that don't have any, 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 any good feelings for this country. Okay, thank you very much, Anu. So Anu thank has expressed... Thank, 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 thank you very much, Anu. Anu. He has expressed his <laughs> grievance. Uh, apparently yes. to him it's not worth the wait. Yes. We still have enough time for you to process your thoughts concerning what Ayo has asked you. We'll be going okay. on a break. Victor okay. is standing by with News Express. When we come back, the conversation continues <laughs> and you also will be a part of it.
Welcome back to the Good Morning Nigeria show and it's still time for our top story and we are still discussing the ministerial list. You think it is worth the wait? Jump on Twitter and tell us what you think at GMNS School TV. Now, Ayo had asked a question. We have a guest. He's Zil Akariwe and he's the head of GEM Voices. Thank you for joining us Thank again. Thank you very much. Okay, so Ayo had asked you a question before we went on the break. Ayo, you have the floor. Oh, wow. And let me just recap that question. No, no, you I remember the question. Here, remember, I remember well, the for question. the benefit of those who are just joining <coughs> okay. in, I just asked about you, just to highlight and look at the names and tell us what you think about the choices. Okay. Uh, I think we'll, I'll take on three things. Uh, the caller who spoke about the youth representation, and um, I, I read somewhere that one of the uh, nominees for, on the ministerial list was screened when he was first nominated as a minister by Saraki's father. Wow. So, I mean, we're, so we're just... So during the time of the current Senate <laughs> president's father, yeah. he was screened. He was a minister. Ulushala in... Saraki, I remember, yeah. that was Saraki's father. <clears throat> exactly. I found that um, very interesting. <laughs> but regarding the... You, you, I don't want to use the word corruption. Regarding the level of integrity of some of the people on the list, what I believe is that the focus should first be competence. All right. First. I agree that we need people with high integrity for things to work. I agree on that completely. Um, but if I would rather have somebody that's highly competent with a stain than have somebody that is completely clean and incapable of doing the work. Mm, okay. Because sometimes being incapable of doing the work is worse than being corrupt. Okay, this Sometimes, is a million yes. dollar so, question, sorry, to call, because you're, going, you're still answering that question. People have asked that. So in a country with millions, um, hundreds of millions of people, we cannot find clean people who, are who can do the job. The truth is we can. Okay. I do not think that the administration has spent or invested enough to find those people. Those kind of people are not in your face. So I'll give you an example. I know in many industries, they are very... I'll give you a typical example using this administration. Mm. Um, the current MD of NMPC, who's also been nominated as a minister. Yes. He's not the kind of person who ordinarily you see hanging around the corridors of power. Mm. People like that need to be looked for and found and pulled in. I heard he was a, a, a contributor in the magazine before now. Well, I, well, I just said that. publisher. A of publisher Hans, of Hints, Hints magazine. magazine. Well, okay. <laughs> yeah, also immobile. Yes, <laughs> yes. yes. So, Things like that. I mean, a lot of people tell you, oh, go to Abuja and hang out. And you say, look, the kind of, what kinds of people would take three to six months of their lives and go and just hang around the corridors of power to get favor, to get notice, to get appointments? There are a lot of people that would do that. Exactly. Now, what kind of people have six months of their lives to do that? Certainly, they are not professionals. Because professionals will be at work every day. You know, so it's, it's a delicate mix, and you can't appoint people you don't know. So it's a delicate mix of how do the competent people with integrity that are capable find themselves in the same circles with the politicians, because those two worlds hardly ever mix. Okay, so we'll take just like one more call before we wrap up this conversation, and the number to call is showing on your screen right now. I want to ask um, about female representation in this list. Now, we know that all over the world we've been canvassing for involving women in politics. Obama has talked about it when he was addressing the um, African Union. We have always been canvassing. But now we have just three women in this partial list. Um, can we say, are we hoping that in the, in the complete list we'll have a lot more women represented? Or are we going to say uh, we're sticking to the previous administration where we didn't have a lot of female ministers? Um, <clears throat> we can hope. But I don't, given the antecedents and even before the elections, when you look at the group pictures, APC took and all that, I remember some pictures that came out and people kept on pointing out in all these meetings, why is there just one woman, why is there? I mean, this is something that we need to make a conscious effort mm -hmm. to change. And um, we just hope that it, there's enough noise around it for the administration to make a conscious effort to pull women in. I remember the transition committee had, I think it was a fair representation of women, well, well fair is subjective. Yes. Um, but again, it's something that we need to make enough, enough noise to ensure that they get some gender mix that's acceptable. 
All right, still talking about the uh, ministerial list and the names that have made up the ministerial list, we know that we still have at least um, 20, we have at least 15 names 15 to come, to um, 36 ministers at, in, you know, at least to come um, in total. Now, some people have said that some names that were touted to be on the list before the official list came out weren't represented. And some of the names people were excited about, like Professor Patu Tommy, people were excited about that. Yes. Wale Edun, people were excited about that name in there. Mrs. Obieze Kwesili, people were excited to see that she might very well be a minister. We know that the list is not complete yet, so we don't know what is to come. But what do you think about having these ones? Because some people had said, oh, for these men, they seem to be credible. They seem to be competent as well. However, they're missing. Was there, when it comes to choosing ministers, is politics still involved? And is it important to have it in that way? Wow, it's, <laughs> in terms of getting things wet, is water involved? I mean, you... you <laughs> Politics is always involved. It's yeah. always, always involved. And those names you called were names we all expected. Yes. Quite all right. But in terms of when we talk about competence, something I forgot to mention earlier that I think is absolutely important. I have little understanding how the Senate can do any type of relevant screening if the portfolios are not attached. So what are you screening? I, I, I imagine that they need to screen if you are suitable for the job. Oh, yeah. So we now know the people, but we don't know the jobs. Mm. So what are you screening? screening so what is this whole screening thing? So for example, we all assume that Kachuku of will course. be minister because. somewhere in the petroleum industry. And so he'll be screened along those lines. But what if tomorrow we wake up and we find out that Kachuku is the minister for finance? I think that would be absurd. You know, so without having the portfolio, I, I don't understand why the names will go out without the portfolios, mm. because you are screening for competence. So if tomorrow I wake up and you tell me that um, Fashola is the minister for justice, even though he's a son, even though he's a sound lawyer, I will object personally. He has not practiced. He's governor eight years. He wasn't practicing law. Before that, he was, I think, chief of staff. Chief of staff, So yes. for maybe 10, 12 years, he hasn't practiced law. So why would he, you know, so if the portfolios are not there, what on earth are, are the senators screening, screening for? You know, this is a conversation that we cannot quite cover in depth now. <coughs> well, we need to have your word that when the list is complete, we'll have you again to analyze this. Yes. 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 <laughs> nice. And that wraps it up here on the Good Morning Nigeria Show. But the conversation continues via our social media portals on Facebook and on Twitter at Germany School TV. Thank you very much, Zio, for coming around. Thank you very much. Looking forward Thank to you. seeing you soon. Hopefully, we don't have to wait another three months for the completion of the list. Huh. On that note, we'll be jetting out of the studio. We'll come back. Entertainment standing by. So, did you like what you just saw? I know you did. Mm -hmm. It's very simple. If you want to see more, just subscribe to our channel right now.